and welcome to Metro Arts. I'm your host, Sophia Sanchez. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll introduce you to filmmaker Christian Davis and arts entrepreneur George Nanamdi. We'll also have singer-songwriter Alex Sway and her band in the studio to perform. <laughs> We'd like to welcome Christian Davis to the Midtown studio. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So you've been described as an up-and-coming filmmaker from mm -hmm. Detroit. How did your career start? Well, I've been doing film for about almost 10 years now. I've um, studied film at D Detroit School of Arts. I was originally there for acting, and I got started even before that, you know, doing little films with my friends, you know, I had I stole my grandfather's video camera from time to time and would make little oh, movies, nice. you know, with my friends. I would write the scripts and edit them and, you know, shoot them. I would sometimes act in them, but I prefer to have my friends in front of the camera and I've been doing it, you know, you know, ever since. Wow, so you started at 12 years old. Yes. Oh my goodness. So you write, edit, direct, act, shoot, and produce a lot of your own material. Yes. What's your favorite role? Um, it's got to it's got to be a tie between editing and directing cuz I feel like that's when the, you know, my most creative juices come out as far as, you know, I'm able to tell people exactly where I want them. I I use my hands a lot. So I I it's sort of, you know, it's sort of good to be able to tell people, like, pinpoint them and also, you know, editing because I can put on different transitions. Like, if I didn't, if it was too dark in one scene, I can edit it a certain way to make it look even that much better. So you have, you like editing and... Yes. Yeah. And yeah. directing. And uh, directing, I've, I, you know, I guess it comes from me being the only child. So, it, you know, I'm kind of a <laughs> bossy a of type autonomy. of guy. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm good at telling people what to do and, you know, where to be in certain places. I feel like that's pretty cool. So we have one of your films here and we're going to watch it now. It's called The Suffering. On the floating shipless oceans, I did all my best to smile to your singing eyes and fingers drew me. Did I dream you dreamed about me? Were you Well, I must 
Can you tell us more about this film? <clears throat> well, The Suffering is showing, is depicting three different people and they're suffering. One is suffering from hiding their sexual orientation. The other one is suffering from nymphomania and the other one being a nymphomaniac and the other one is suffering from drugs and alcohol. And I was uh, talking with a fellow, a fellow student who used to go here. His name is Chris Brass. He did the choreographing for the dancing and it was just a matter of just in, uh, how can I depict some people suffering through the art of dance it was just more of long lines of experimental drama so I like to you know experiment with different genres and you know put my own little spin on them sure that's great thank you what upcoming projects are you working on well I have three movies that I'm planning on putting out uh, I just finished one movie. It was called Infidelity. It's my first French film. It's uh, actually in the Michigan Film Festival and the Ann Arbor Film Festival. It's about a guy who uh, finds out that his wife is cheating on him, so he stalks her. And yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I was able to, another fellow student who used to go here, he was actually in my women's studies class, and I talked with him and told him about the script. He didn't have a real grasp of the language that well, so I told him, you know, how about we do it in French? And it was, it was great. It turned out great. Um, so the other two are, one is horror. It's called uh, The Lady in White. Mm. And it's an uh, urban legend, and I just wanted to depict it here. And it's about a guy who's on his way home from college, and he picks up this hitchhiker mm -hmm. who's, you know, been hurt and he finds out that she's been dead for about five years right. when he takes her home to her family. And, um, you know, I've, and the other one is called, um, well, it's, it's, we're still working on a title, but it's called The Art of Loving. It's about a painter who uh, re still has love for this woman, even though she's, wow. she's passed. Where can we learn more about you? You can actually learn more about my work on uh, YouTube. Okay. I have a YouTube page, it's Christian Davis. Okay. I have a Facebook page, it's my production page, it's Sweet Obsession Productions, okay. and Instagram. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, sure. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. <laughs> And now let's welcome arts entrepreneur and gallery owner George Nanamdi to the Midtown studio at Wayne State. Welcome. Welcome, Sophie. So you are the founder of the Nanamdi Center for Contemporary Art. Can you tell us a bit about how you got your start? Well, first I started as a gallerist in downtown Detroit in 1981. And in 89, I moved the gallery to Birmingham, uh, where I was then for 13 years. And then in 2001, I opened the Anomaly Center down here. We it really was the gallery. Mm -hmm. And we, we renovated an area, uh, a building. And in that renovation, the, the center was born because it became too large of a project just to be a gallery. Right. So can you describe the center? Well, the center was in a section of the town of Midtown called mm -hmm. the Sugar Hill Arts District. And the center has a exhibiting space, a retail space, a black box for the for film and concerts, 
a, a vegetarian restaurant, a wine bar, and a coffee shop. So it's quite a lot in one space. It, it is. It's like a 16,000 square foot space uh, located there on forests and just off of Woodward. You're considered an art expert and developer. Tell us about that. Well, the art expert comes from uh, just my longevity in the art business. Uh, I started it, like I said, in 1981, but I started as a psychologist. And as a psychologist, I felt that I wanted to see more of a connection uh, with uh, our communities, with the arts, which is also uh, like the catalyst for a lot of the development today. But I was thinking like this in 1981, but I didn't have the, any term to go around with it, just what I was thinking. Uh, so that's how, and over the years, I was just trained by the different artists, by reading and exhibitions in terms of developing the eye for art. Then as a developer, I came into a concept called creative placemaking, and that's what we have done here with the Sugar Hill Arts District is a creative make placemaking. So what is creative placemaking? That's when we took, we like for instance, where when I mentioned the Sugar Hill, mm -hmm. is that we took an area and we kind of uh, took the buildings and repurposed them in a way. A lot of them were not even being used. Uh, like say, we have the art center, and then the other another building we have a art art live workspace. Then we have uh, MoCAD. Uh, we had the artist market. All these things come and fit into a art district. So it all sort of comes together. Yes. So now it has a, it becomes a district as opposed to just saying right. I have one location. Right. You know, That's great. You, you're the catalyst for a change. And also we're currently working on another di uh, district and uh, on Grand River in the West End area. That's great. And we have a video from your center. Let's watch. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about the piece you brought today? This is a piece by uh, a painting by Herbert Gentry. Herbert Gentry was born in Harlem. He started his career in art uh, after World War II in Paris and Scandinavia. What has been your favorite exhibition so far? Well, saying your favorite exhibition is like saying your favorite child. Right. So I prefer to say each exhibition has its, has its pluses and has something different that you can get out of it. But we always want to expand our audience vision of art and also give them an enjoyable experience. Sometimes it's a challenging experience, but some, also those challenging exhibitions can be some of the best ones for people because they like, it becomes like a moment that they just, the uh, light goes off for them. Right, it almost becomes a catalyst for yeah. their creativity. Yes. So you, um, what programs do you offer well, um, at the center? We do the exhibitions, then we do concerts, but we have a special program. We have an atelier program. Atelier is 
is a, is a atelier is a kind of French word for art workshop. And in our art workshops, we do classes for business of art, but we have a special class also for developing uh, work skills, developing a work, work skill development. And this is for people who want to have entry level uh, employment in, in the uh, art industry. For instance, we have classes in framing, uh, installing, wrapping, all the shipping of art. And I think this is be important for our city to have people be able to take advantage of those jobs. And where can we learn more about you and the NAMD Center for Contemporary Art? Well, we're at 52 East Forest, and we're at, you can go on our website at namdcenter.org. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much, Sophia. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. And now, let's welcome Alex Way and her band to Metro Arts with her song, Way I Am. In my room, all alone, thinking about the days that have passed, and how lately it's been good days, but how long will good times last? I feel like everything's going wrong, the good days are no longer seen. They say these four walls cannot talk. So why does it feel like they're mocking me for not being enough? For not being who you expect me to be. So as I sit here and hurt, I wonder why I can't see. You made me feel like I'm not worth somebody's everlasting love. So I wait for the day that you'll open your eyes and see I'm an angel from above. It seems like you're the only one who's not okay with who I am. I tell myself not to let you get to me. Getting tired of you and the way you treat me. So I've decided that it's time to let you go and make space for those who are truly see. I'm fine just the way that I am. Don't let nobody change me. I'm a superwoman, a Miss Independence. I can be out. You tried to break me, tried to make me see the reflection you wanted me to see, even though I still see through your eyes. Slowly breaking free to see that I'm fine just the way that I am. Don't let nobody change me. I'm a superwoman, a Miss Independent. I can be all I imagine to. Stop trying to make me something I'm not. Just love me for who I am. That was a lovely song. Thank you. You have a similar sound to India Ari and Lauren Hill. Who inspires you? Uh, those two artists inspire me a lot. I've also listened to a lot of gospel growing up, and that um, really inspired a lot of the music that I write. 
I also love to listen to any kind of music, like jazz, um, rap, R&B, sometimes country. Oh my all gosh. the time, but everything, nice. every kind of music inspires me. Nice. So you started singing when you were four years old and playing the violin when you were 11. How did you get your start so early? Well, like I said, I grew up in the church, and uh, our church had a, a youth choir and also an orchestra. And so when I was growing up, I wanted to be a part. So that's what made me pick up those instruments. Great. So I understand that you write all your own music. What's your process like? Well, I usually come up with a chorus and I like sing out the melody and write out words and then I try to find like chords to go with it. Um, and I find that it's easier for me to write things when I'm in the mood of whatever song it is that I'm writing. Like if I'm sad, it's a good time to write a sad song. Right. Happy, good time to write a happy song. So, so what inspires you? Um, <laughs> everything like <laughs> all kinds of music uh, every like everyday life situations mm -hmm. um, feelings emotions when it comes to my friends myself class um, just everything yeah who are the other members of your band okay so we have first Gerald Dixon on keyboards nice. and John Lavelle on bass Great. and Eric Childress on drums great so where can we find out more about you um, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com uh, slash Alex Way Music. I'm also on youtube.com slash Alex Way Music and on Twitter and Instagram at Alex Way Music. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Here again is Alex Way performing I Got You on Metro Arts Detroit, produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. So crazy, baby, oh, this feeling I have for you, no one is making through, but since hanging with you lately, it feels so good to know that you got me and I got you, baby. It feels so good to know that you got me and I got you, baby.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Christian Davis, George Namdi, and Alex Wei and her band for joining us today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host, Sophia Sanchez, reminding you to seek out inspiration and explore the arts in your community. Thank <laughs> you.